Hey, how's it going? You see that here? This is the 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonale plug-in hybrid. Or as you can tell, it's a green car that's green. Or is that a green, green car? Oh yeah, the other thing that's cool is today, it's actually St. Patrick's Day. So I'm shooting with green all around. Maybe this will be a lucky review. Stay tuned. The Alfa Romeo Tonale first debuted as a concept during the 2019 Geneva Auto Show. And what exists today is thankfully very much in line with what was seen in the concept. It's designed as a crossover that is sized down from its larger Stelvio stablemate. Exterior design cues clearly validate its Italian design heritage. Notable Alfa Romeo styling cues include the classic GT line, which runs from front to back, and the classic Triolobo frontage. But the front does offer notable changes, such as the 3 plus 3 full LED headlight design, which was designed in conjunction with Morelli, a major automotive supplier. And the distinctive Alfa Romeo Scudetto shield now floats above the front bumper instead of being embedded into it. It's a cue that won't get noticed by everyone, but will definitely be noticed by fans of the brand. And at the rear of the Tonale, the taillights take on the same design cues as the headlights and form a sign curve that fully wraps around the rear of the car, making it a truly unique and distinctive light signature. My top-end Veloce trim tester also came equipped with 20-inch graphite gray wheels and the distinctive style cannon that Alfa uses to represent the old rotary telephone dial. It's really unique, full of nostalgia for me, and also gives plenty of visibility to the Brembo brakes that the Tonali was equipped with. And since I mentioned this was a green, green car, I need to point out how gorgeous the exterior paint color is, which Alpha calls Verde Fangio Metallic. It was a huge hit with just about everyone that saw me in it or saw photos I posted of it online. Powering up this 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonali plug-in hybrid is a combination of an all-aluminum 1.3 liter direct injection turbocharged gas engine and a 15.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery that is paired to a 90 kilowatt electric motor. This is a, an all-wheel drive system, however, it is one where the electric motor is paired to the rear axle and the gas engine is paired to the front. When you're driving in an electric-only mode, it is a rear-wheel drive vehicle, but the onboard computer will determine when it is necessary to get into all-wheel drive and then it engages the gasoline engine overall. In terms of its overall power and output, uh, you're looking at 285 horsepower and 347 pound-feet of torque. This is also paired to a six-speed automatic transmission. And with respect to its overall EV range, you're looking at about 50 kilometers or 30 miles. And that to me is, well, it's basically about bare minimum for a plug-in hybrid uh, today. I mean, we're well past that point where Gen 1 PHEVs would, could get you your 25 or 30 kilometers and say that's great. I mean, we now have some higher end uh, plug-in hybrids in the Mercedes, for example, the, you know, the, the, the G450e, you're talking 70, 80 kilometers of EV only range. This is a bit of a different category uh, in this compact, but still we're looking at higher ranges. And for a plug-in hybrid really to be effective at reducing emissions, you need to have um, a larger EV only range. Something like this, I mean, you may have to, you know, plug in more than once a day to really get the, the utmost effective benefit of driving a plug-in hybrid if reducing emissions is a priority of yours. That it really is the key because not everybody who owns a plug-in hybrid actually charges it up all the time. And that's this weird fact that we've discovered through some of the early utilizations of plug-in hybrids. Not everybody is using it the way they should. So if that's going to be the case, then a, a 50 kilometer range really isn't all that great. So if you are charging it up, how long does it take? Well, with a level two charger here, this will go from zero to full in about two and a half hours, which is pretty good. And you won't really have to wait that long. If say you're at an office, you should totally be charged up again on the way home. Uh, if you're just gonna use a level one charger, because some people who have a PHEV will do that, you're probably looking at about six hours. So easily an overnight thing if that's what you wanna do. Here's a little fun fact for you, both on the US and Canada. This Alfa Romeo Tonale also comes in a gas-only version. There's a two-liter turbocharged engine, but it's only available in Canada, not in the United States. There's only the PHEV in the US. Now, I know this, is, of course, is the Dodge Hornet upgraded, and the Hornet itself does come in both plug-in hybrid and gas-only on both sides of the border. However, if you want the gas-only 
And I'm not sure why it would, because while it's kind of spunky, it really kind of left me a bit lacking. The transmission wasn't great, and I far prefer the performance of this PHEV. But if you're one of those, you gotta come north of the 49th. Okay, automakers are always trying to give you the latest, newest thing to get your interest going in some marketing thing, or the first of, the best of. Well, Alfa Romeo with the Tonale has come up with something totally new that, again, I've never seen before. And I'll be honest, I don't fully understand it, but because of that, I'm, I've actually got my notes from the media site, so I'm just going to I'll read it to you, and you'll understand it better if I do it this way. For me to try to decipher it, well, anyway. In a world exclusive, Tonale debuts non-fungible token or NFT technology, a true innovation in the automotive sector. Alfa Romeo is the first automaker to link a car with an NFT digital certificate. The technology is based on the blockchain card concept, a confidential and non-modifiable record of the main stages in the life of an individual vehicle. With the customer's consent, the NFT will record certain vehicle data, generating a certificate that can be used to assure the car has been properly maintained with a positive impact on its residual value. On the pre-owned car market, NFT certification represents an additional source of credibility for owners or dealers to count on. I think I know what they're saying. And if I'm correct in that this is kind of a digital record of ownership, which is, you know, some jurisdictions when you're selling a used car kind of want kind of like a service record, then I think that's cool. And I think that's what it is. But NFT and, and blockchain, I just don't get it. So forgive me, uh, but if you understand and you think that's cool, then awesome. This is a new thing for you to consider when looking for a vehicle. But if you don't, if you're like me, and it doesn't really resonate or even matter, <laughs> well, you know anyway. There you go. The interior of the Tonale doesn't match the exceptionality of its exterior design, I've got to admit. While laid out in a manner that's generally consistent with how Alfa Romeos are designed, there really isn't much of a wow factor to be had. Now that's not to say this is a poor design. The front instrument cluster projects out in an aggressive style and the signature start stop button placed on the steering wheel with the metallic Scudetto logo are certainly distinctive. The center console still is on the small side, which happens a lot in Alphas, but it's enveloped in a wood grain paneling that is illuminated from the rear, which adds a nice elegant touch and somewhat unexpected I might add. This is a smaller crossover, so seating is not roomy or abundantly spacious. Alcantara covered seats are fine as it was in my tester, but my wider hips could have used another inch or so. Rear seating is on the compact side, and while my kids who are all either almost as tall as me or taller manage to be in there for short periods, it's not a vehicle for long cruising if you're tall and destined to sit in the back. As a small crossover, one shouldn't expect a lot of cargo space, and that holds true with the Tonale. There is just under 23 cubic feet in the rear and just over 50 cubic feet with the second row seats mostly folded down. It's okay, but don't expect a whole lot of stuff. The interiors of Alfa Romeos do have some unique styling and, and features that are worth noting out. Probably the one that's most famous and you see it and talk about is in their selector switch. I mean, other vehicles have drive selectors, but they have their DNA system, which depending upon the vehicle might have some different specific terms, but it basically is all around the same thing. And in the PHEV, there's no different. If you put your selector switch into D, you're getting into dual power or dynamic mode, which basically is where you're getting your maximum performance. You're going to get the full output of the 1.3 liter turbocharged engine and the rear electric motor. They're going to be powering together for the most optimum sort of ride in terms of overall output performance and that drive experience. Most people will spend their time driving in N, which is natural mode it's basically the default it really is where the electric motor and the engine are switching automatically defaulting to electric until it's uh, not necessary and then of course you move it down to a you're getting into what we would call advanced efficiency mode here in the PHEV and that's where you're basically working on maximum electrification it will continue that way if you keep an A until the EV only capacity of the battery wears out and then it operates in hybrid mode after that. So there's your D and A, which is part of the Alfa Romeo signature experience. 
I've almost stopped referencing fuel economy ratings when it comes to plug-in hybrids because there's so many variables that go into combined ratings and it's also rather complicated to understand how it all works when trying to come up with a fuel efficiency rating that factors in the EV only driving range for varying periods of time. But posted numbers do exist, so I'll just throw them up for all to see and you can use them however you see fit. While it would be unfair to say that the Alfa Romeo Tonali plug-in hybrid is more about style than substance, this really is a vehicle that perhaps has a disconnect between how good it looks and how average to just slightly above average it drives and performs. In a category that counts the Lexus NX as perhaps its only true direct competitor given that it also has a plug-in hybrid, and also the Volvo XC40, Mercedes-Benz GLB, BMW X1 and Audi Q3 also as competitors, it would be hard to argue against the Tonali as the best looking of the bunch. And while there is some spunkiness and some strong handling characteristics involved in the drive, it does seem as if there is just a little bit missing overall. It's a fine vehicle and one that will draw interest from a wider spectrum of customers than usual for the brand. But there is room for improvement, so one only hopes that to truly achieve la dolce vita, Alfa Romeo will truly understand that chi ha tempo non aspetta tempo. Or in other words, those who have time, don't wait for the time. I really hope you enjoyed this look at the 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonale plug-in hybrid. And if you did, give it a like, give it a share, talk about this with others. You know, if you're not subscribed to the Novak Report on YouTube, now would be a good time to do so. I'd love to have you on board. And if you are a subscriber, thank you, but make sure you're ringing that bell so that you're notified every time I upload something new. That's it for now. I'm Eric Novak. Thanks for watching, everyone.